Hello everyone, my name is Pat, and believe it or not, I am not related to Charlie Day from It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Every time I get excited, my voice goes really high and that kind of comes out, but that's not what we're here for. We're here to learn three CrossFit style movements that you can use in a commercial facility. We're going to call them CrossFit style movements because they're commonly found in CrossFit workouts or CrossFit spaces, but not so often found in commercial facilities. We're going to show you how to do them so that you're not taking up too much space, not getting on people's nerves too much, and not uh, drawing too much attention to yourself so that people kick you out of said facility. Let's jump into the first one, which is the snatch. So we're gonna talk about the snatch first. Now the snatch, it's a funny word. Snatchity, snatch, snatch, snatch. We'll get over that now, and we'll move on into what the actual movement is. The snatch is just taking something directly from the ground, putting it all the way up overhead. Uh, people will tell you it's a very complex movement, and it is. People spend their entire lives training to learn how to do a barbell snatch. Uh, they spend their entire lives training to do that and the clean and jerk. So if you don't get it perfect in this like two minute little section here, shame on you. No, it's more about learning the gross mechanics behind it, how this movement is accomplished, what the basics that we're looking for are. So what I'm gonna show you is a dumbbell snatch. Classically, you do it with a barbell. The reason we're not doing it with a barbell is because we're in a commercial facility. It's hard to clang and bang in a commercial facility. Dropping bars everywhere, yelling at people who are going around you, bending plates, who knows how quality the bars are. Um, yeah, just use a dumbbell. That's what we're gonna go with today. So single arm dumbbell snatch, again, it's going from the ground to directly overhead. The big keys are use your legs to move the load and then use your midline and trunk, your abs and your core, to brace and make sure it doesn't bend and move and then transfers the power from the legs to the arm and the bell that makes the bell move. So it looks like this from the front. Wah! And then from the side, you're here. Now, I'm over-exaggerating a little bit of a jump that I'm doing. I just want you guys to see that the momentum from the legs is what makes the bell move. And then I pull myself down slightly under it and land in what's called this power position. There's also a full snatch where you land in a squat, and there's also a muscle snatch where you land with your legs straight. I don't want you thinking about those two. I want you landing in this power position. Same thing you'd do if you jumped, landed like this. Just now from the ground, you're going to push your hips back, set your back so it's nice and flat, grab the object. Now if you can't have a flat back and pick something up off the ground, first off, you should look at fixing that. But second off, you can just lift it a little higher, more to about knee level. So we want to start in this position here. You can have the bell hammer style or straight this way. This might be a little easier because you don't have to avoid the body, but I prefer kind of the hammer here. Now from here, you just drive into the ground and think about jumping the weight up overhead. The arm is along for the ride, and the tendency for people is they don't trust the power from their legs, so they want to pull their arm really early. So you end up seeing this as they go overhead. What I want you to do is think about keep the arm as long as possible for as long as possible. That allows the power to transfer from the hips and legs into the object, get that bad boy moving. That's going to be our power snatch. Packs quite a punch. If you couldn't hear it, I'm breathing kind of hard, and I've done like four. Throw those into workouts. Make sure you're moving really well, pulling it off the ground, using those hips and legs. You'll get a nice, potent stimulus. Enjoy. All righty, now we're going to talk about the wall ball, every short person's absolute favorite movement. Huh? It's where you squat down, holding a ball, all the way below parallel, you throw that ball against the wall, it bounces off the wall, then when you're super tired, you have to navigate catching that ball in midair and going back down into a squat. It takes a bit of coordination, takes a bit of leg drive, takes a bit of lungs and wind in order to do it. It is a fantastic movement. Unfortunately, in commercial spaces, oftentimes the balls that they have are the hard rubber balls. So if you miss those and they smash you in the nose, Ouch. it leads to bad stuff. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull it back and scale it to something called a single dumbbell thruster. It's going to do a very similar stimulus, so you're going to get a very similar thing from it, but you're not throwing an object up in the air. You need a much smaller footprint, requires a little less coordination, so you can still pack that punch as far as the uh, stimulus of the movement, but you don't quite have to uh, catch a flying object coming at your face. That could be nice and hard. Now with this, we're going to do a dumbbell. We're going to turn it on its side. We're going to put it up in front of our chest. This is actually the same way we would hold a ball. From here, what we'll do is we'll do a squat, where we squat all the way down below parallel, because that's the only time it's actually a squat. And then we're going to drive up out of the bottom and thrust it up overhead. This is called a thruster. You thrust the weight up. 
Now from the side, what's gonna look like is you squat down, come up, and then lock the arms out up overhead. Now with the dumbbell, if you're super jacked, it's kind of hard to lock out your arms up overhead because you've got that narrow grip. You still want to fight for whatever range that you have. So push it up, try to reach back, get the elbows locked out, if at all possible. If you can't do it, it should tell you that you need to get a little bit more mobile and look into things to improve that range up overhead. But for right now, do what you can. Hold the bell on its side. Make sure as you're squatting down, you're staying back in your heels. You're staying as upright as you can, and this object might even help that. And you're using the hips and legs to drive it up. Now one or two might feel okay, but what you might notice is after like 10, you kind of want to die. And the reason for that is because it's such a long range of motion, and you can actually use a pretty decent load in order to do this. So try the dumbbell thruster. We're going to call it our wall ball substitution. And if you want to make it easier, make it slightly lighter. Try to do the full range of motion rather than going heavier and a partial range. That is our wall ball substitution known as a dumbbell thruster. This movement's fun. It's, it's something that you can do just if you're looking for some nice suffering for the day. It's called the devil's press. Um, it's all the rage right now on the interwebs and the Instagrams and the Twitter books and all those kinds of things. But what it is basically is a really long range of motion, meaning you're moving through a lot of space. You can move a decently heavy load and you can actually move it pretty quickly. And that combination means it's going to require a lot from the body, which means it's going to pack a punch. You're going to be breathing hard and you're going to be nice and sore the days after you do it. Uh, if you do it right or if you do it wrong. Now, when you do it wrong, you run the risk of injury, so don't do it wrong. Anytime you're moving through space, you want to be looking at keeping your back nice and flat on every single thing that you're doing. You're looking at driving through the middle of the foot as you're doing that, and you're looking to basically keep the knees tracking out over the toes. Those are big points to make sure you look for in any given movement. If you've never done a burpee before, you're about to be enlightened. Burpee is you lie on the ground and you get back up and clap. They're pretty brutal, especially when you uh, do them for any sort of number, like volume or number of reps. But you can do a burpee with dumbbells. And then as you come out of the bottom of the dumbbells, or at the bottom of the burpee, you're gonna stand up and do basically a double arm snatch all the way up overhead. Doesn't require tons of technique, but it requires a lot of energy. And the better technique you have, the less energy you'll have to use. So remember when we talked about the snatch before? You're now doing it with two hands, and you're coming from the bottom of a burpee, you're going all the way overhead. So what it looks like is you kick back, you do a push up, press yourself up, jump back to this position. Now from this ground position here, go off the ground, up and overhead, and then back down to the ground. So kick back, push up, here, set, and go up. Not like a thousand of those. Now if you can't do the push up when you're planked out like this, all you gotta do is drop to the knees, and then just do the push up on your knees, totally cool there. Now you can step through if you can't jump through, but from here, the tendency is one of you to rip it off the ground and go to town with it. No dice, senor. You're gonna set your back, which means drop your butt a little lower, pick it up off the ground, get a bit of a swing through, and try to use that momentum to get it up and overhead. To make this easier, use lighter load, much lighter load. You can even do it with two dumbbells, where you kick back, go to your knees, do the push up, come back through, and then just switch the one dumbbell and go up and overhead. So with just a single dumbbell, that first snatch that we talked about. As you can tell, <laughs> it's actually pretty tiring. <laughs> um, so use these. Don't use them all the time. Use them sparingly. Toss them into workouts. Same with the, the, the wall ball that we talked about and that snatch that we talked about. They're great crossfit style movements that you can throw into a very small footprint limited gear in a commercial space, and have a grand old time. Enjoy, I'm out. That was good, it worked, I'll take it.